and welcome back to the second part of History Infection. We're looking again at the plague, more precisely the cause of agent Yersinius pestis. Yersinius pestis is what's known as a class 3 hazards group organism. This may not sound so bad, but there are only four groups. Uh, a group 3 is a potentially fatal pathogen, but does have a somewhat effective treatment. It also has to do with how easily it spreads throughout a community. If Yersinius pestis got out of the lab, it would be quite a big deal if it was a eumonic form of it. Although you probably could go out and isolate it from peri dogs and other such wild organisms. The category relates to the facility you need to work and study the organism in safely. This is our CAT3 lab. We use this lab mainly to check for clinical samples from infectious patients suffering from cystic fibrosis and who have Pseudomonas and Burkholderia infections. It may also soon actually have Yersinius pestis in it as we study its virulence and transmission. One thing I want to mention quickly was this picture. This picture is uh, of someone who has attempted to make a plague-proof costume. Now, when I saw this as a kid, I used to think that it was uh, similar to the idea that they're trying to use a scary image to scare away the, the evil spirits, but it actually comes from our good old friend Miasmic Theory. The beak-like structure actually has things being burnt and smelling salts in it to try and discourage the bad air from getting in. It may look like he's dressed as a big scary crow, but it's actually probably quite an effective way of keeping the fleas off you, provided one doesn't get in. But the whole burning incense thing probably didn't work. It probably did cover up the rather horrible smell of rotting corpses that would have been around at the time of the plague. But aside from that, it just looks rather cool. So how does the bacteria actually kill people? Well. It has a number of different cool systems, and the one I like the best is something known as a type 3 secretory system. If you've heard about evolution, you've probably heard the type 3 secretory system come up before. It's the forerunner of what a bacterial flagellum is, but that's a whole different story. As its name would suggest, a type 3 secretion system secretes things. However, it doesn't just do it wildly into the, you know, out like a fool, no. Instead, type 3 secretion systems inject directly into host cells. They're essentially little tiny hypodermic needles that bacteria use to inject proteins into your cells. The overall effect of this process is the bacteria hijacks the host cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is essentially a uh, cell's scaffolding. It holds everything together. It has roles in dividing your DNA. It pulls the cells apart, allows them to move. And the bacteria can pump in proteins that change how the system works to allow it to be engulfed around by the host cell. Inside the host cell, the bacterium is far better protected from the immune system and go about doing its devious things. You see, host cells can also be the very immune systems that are trying to hunt and kill invading cells. But not just content with that, evolution has seen to it that the proteins that Yersinia secretes can also alter the immune response, leading to the cell death of the immune cells. So how do we find out that Yersinia is the causative agent of plague? The identification of Yersinia came after much investigation and an interesting story of two sort of rivals. Hong Kong in 1984, and once again in human history, the plague has raised its ugly head. Two microbiologists are dispatched, one from the Japanese Institute for Infectious Disease, whose name I am about to butcher, Katasatu Shibasuboro, or Katasatu Shibasuboro? Shibasuboro? Shibasuboro. I'm going to say Shibasuboro. If that's wrong, please tell me in the comments. And Alexander Yersin from the Pasteur Institute in France. Both microbiologists were exceptionally gifted and studied under some of the greatest minds of biology. Shabasu Boren studied under Koch, while Yersin was a student of Pasteur and spent some time working for Koch as well. However, only Shabasu Boren was welcomed with open arms in Hong Kong. He was given all the samples he wanted and a pride of place in an adequately supplied lab and essentially allowed to do what he needed to do. Yersin, however, was snuffed by the officials and barely tolerated. He had to work out of a small hut next to the lab that Shibasubora worked in. Shibasubora made progress, but in a lapse of judgment, he didn't try and isolate bacteria from the classic buboids of the patients and, and the corpses he had collected. Yersin, however, had to bribe some lab technicians in order to get access to a body. Once there, he started taking samples and was able to start working separately in his less well-supplied lab. Shibasubora was the first to offer a description of the isolated bacterium from the samples, but his description was unclear, vague, and it contradicted himself several times. Yersin made a later description, however his was clear and concise and described the bacteria that was isolated from the buboids. Yersin was also able to demonstrate for the first time that the same bacillus, the bacteria's shape, 
was present in rodents as well as the human disease, thus underlining the possible means of transmission from rodent to host. The new bacterium was termed Pastella pestis in honour of his school, however it was renamed in 1967 uh, Yersinia pestis in honour of him. Shaibasaburo probably did also isolate Yersinia, but due to his poor description, he's only recently really been given credit that he's due. The formal link between rats and fleas was made by the French bacteriologist Paul Louis Simond, and the Plague Research Commission formally accepted the role in fleas and transmission of plague from rat to humans. Nowadays, most cases of Yersinia infection are somewhat unexpected, but they can still be a cause for alarm. So that's the plague's long, awesome, abridged history. Next time I'm going to be talking about syphilis in a special Valentine's Day show. I'll hope you'll join me then. Uh, remember to hit subscribe and like and all that sort of stuff if you enjoyed watching it, and thanks for watching. I'll see you then.